Level of detail, or LODs, can be very effective at maintaining good performance in a real-time walkthrough. Especially when your scene is composed of hundreds or thousands of objects, each built with hundreds or thousands of faces. Real-time walkthroughs need to run at 30 to 60 frames every second to maintain a good level of visual fidelity, and even as high as 90 frames per second when displayed on a VR headset. And LODs can help ensure that. LEDs for those who haven't worked with them before are simply lower resolution versions of your geometry. Each version will be displayed by Unreal Studio depending upon how far away it is from the viewer, and thus how small it appears on the screen. Let's walk through the process of generating and importing LODs into Unreal Studio using 3ds Max here. So we have this couch and we're going to go ahead and isolate it. And we need to generate our LODs. We're going to generate uh, four LODs. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that wireframe. All right, so we need to make copies of our couch. We don't want them to be instances. Okay, so we have our four copies and then we're gonna make our second copy at 50%, but first we'll need to add the multi-res modifier to it. All right, so through generating, we're gonna set the vertex percentage to 50. All right, so there's our first LOD. The great thing about multi-res is that uh, it does not destroy UVs, so we still have our nice texturing there. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just create the LODs for the rest of these, and then we'll jump back in after that. All right, so all my LODs are generated. We'll go ahead and turn on edged faces there so you can see the difference there. This is the one at 15%. We've got 25, 50, and then, of course, the original. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to center these on each other. So we'll just use the Align tool for that. Okay, now that they're aligned, we need to go ahead and group them. So we're just going to select them all now and then group. And we'll call this Couch LODs. Now let's jump over to the Utility panel and we need to add the Level of Detail modifier. We'll create a new set, and there we go. We've got all of our LODs. There we go, two, three, four, and five, and the percentage for each LOD. So now we're ready to export this. So let's go ahead and go to our FBX export. And in this case, we want to make sure to check animation so that the LODs will be exported. OK, and in Unreal, we'll just hit the Import button and go ahead and bring the couch in. All right, so in the FBX import options, we want to have this static mesh LOD group selected. We're going to choose large prop. Now, you don't technically have to select this here. You can do it later on, but we'll go ahead and do that now. Also, we want to check import mesh LODs. Finally, if we scroll down a little further, we have under our LOD settings, auto compute LOD distance. We'll go ahead and leave that checked by default, and we'll look at the setting when we go into the mesh editor. Let's hit import. All right, so our couch is finished importing. We've got it here. We'll go ahead and open it up in the Mesh Editor. If we look over to the right, there's a Details panel, and in here we're going to find all of the LOD settings that we need to work with. First up, we have LOD Picker, and this is going to allow us to manually take a look at the LODs. Right now it's set to Auto, which means that as I'm zooming out from the couch here, it's actually changing LODs, which you really can't tell because it did a great job of reducing it. But we can turn on Wireframe here and see the changes occur a lot easier. So we can see here we're at the maximum, the original couch, and as we move out, we can see it's reducing in quality. Now we can also choose the LODs we want to display, so we'll set it to zero there, now to one, and we'll go all the way to three. Under this, we can see the actual current LOD, what information it has in it. So we've got materials. We can actually change the materials per LOD. So if we wanted to go with a lower quality, uh, smaller resolution material there, and that will help with performance as well. All right, and so at LOD zero, we can also open up some of these settings here, build settings, and uh, there's a lot of information here on, on uh, various things that you can enable or disable. That's beyond the scope of this course, but feel free to look through all of these settings here if you'd like to get, uh, get really in-depth in working with LODs. And we also have under that the LOD settings drop down here, the rollout. We have the ability to specify the LOD group, like I said, when we were first importing, how we specified that. We can also change that here. 
We also have uh, the ability to change the LOD that we're currently using, so we can re-import the LODs and get a different version if we needed to make some changes. We can do that here. Now, if we want to turn off auto compute LOD distance here, so maybe we don't like the distance that the LODs are changing at, we can disable it here. And once we disable that, we just need to scroll back up to screen size right there under the first the LOD zero drop down. And right now it's set to one, so we could we could change that to 0.5, which would be 50% uh, or less. So we can see now it jumps from LOD zero to LOD one when it's about 50% of the screen. Obviously, we'd want to change all of the other LODs as well to match those settings. Although the scene we're working with is really too small to benefit from LODs, LODs provide a huge benefit to performance in a larger scene with a greater view distance. Using them could very well make the difference between a walkthrough that runs poorly and one that doesn't. All right, so up next, we'll get into setting up collision detection and discuss why you may or may not need it.